Hello and welcome to today's historic best of three deck tech and gameplay video on a deck that I'm calling uh, Gain Drain. Gain Drain is basically a black and green or Golgari or Witherbloom, depending on which one you know. Uh, I guess you would call it kind of a mid rangey but sort of a combo deck that revolves primarily around. Uh, the explore mechanic from Ixalan. Oops, just realized. And a certain, um, I guess you would call it combo that is enabled because of both the existing Ixalan explorer package and a couple of new cards released. Now granted, the aforementioned combo is not necessary for the deck to win. The deck is it's a solid sort of mid-rangey like trying to you know, be valuable or, or play valuable cards and all that style deck, but it does have a combo built in it. The combo is, or the combo pieces are as follows. We have four copies of Wild, of Wild Growth Walker. This is the initial life gain or the gain part of the game drain. When you happen to uh, gain life from an explore trigger, or if you just happen to gain life from any other source, but this is the primary source. This is the first part of the chain. The second part of the chain can be filled in by either Dina Soul Steeper or Vito Thorn of Dusk Rose. For the sake of, we'll use uh, Dina for this example. Whenever you say gain a life from a wild growth walker, Dina's ability triggers and you and each opponent will lose one life. The same is true of Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose. Of course, Vito is a little bit better in that their life loss is equal to however much you gained, where Dina's is just one life. Of course, Dina is earlier on, so it's easier to get down early, as well as it's just nice to have, in this case, seven copies of the effect. If you happen to uh, uh, get two of the combo pieces, and you have an exquisite blood, that is what creates the infinite loop. And keen-eyed viewers will also notice that a sort of explanation of the combo was actually the thumbnail for this video, so if you happen to want to look at it again, there's an easy way to sort of uh, stare at the combo. And if you... Anywho, with the blood on the field, if you say gain life from a wild growth walker that gain causes your opponent to lose a life the lost life triggers a gaining of life equal to the damage so for the example of Dina let's say you you gain life with the wild growth walker when you gain life an opponent loses one life so you say we'll say you've gained one for the sake of this example you gain one life you deal one damage to your opponent, which triggers exquisite blood, which gains you one life. Thus is the first loop of the infinite loop. And this will continue with either Dina or Vito until an opponent dies. Granted, this infinite loop will almost always kill your opponent, though there are technically ways your opponent can slip out of the combo but they are very few and far between. Your um, split second cards like a crossing Grip can do it. Uh, in the turn effects, or like your Teferi's Protection, there are effects that let your opponent survive the combo, but they are a very rare and very rarely see play. By and large, if you just happen to get the four cards for the combo necessary, and you happen to do the prerequisite steps, the vast majority, say 80-85% of the time, you will immediately win the game. Now, in order to support the Wild Growth Walkers explore trigger of getting bigger in the life game, we run pretty much the core of what was the explore package long ago, if you happen to be playing since, or for a long time like I have in Arena. We just happen to run all of the good explore cards in our colors. 
Seeker Squire and the Merfolk Branch Walker are both just two drops that explore. I'll give you a second to read Explore. It's a nice way to either make your can it make your creatures bigger, of course, but also helps to sort of filter out dead draws. It's kind of like a like a surveil, sort of, but not always. Also running, uh, besides Jade Light Range, we're also running two Scavenging Oozes as another way to sort of easily gain life, which is what I talked about earlier, how there's other ways to gain the life, as another way to sort of start the combo here. If you have a creature in your graveyard, or a creature in your graveyard, or in your opponent's graveyard to exile, and you also have the Dina or the Vito in Exquisite Blood, that's another way to start the combo. So there's a little bit of resiliency based into the combo if you need it to. And again, Jade Light Ranger is just a 3 mana 2 one that happens to explore twice. And it's another very good explore card. So let the rest of the deck is really just kind of support cards. I am running 3 Inquisition of Kozilex and 3 Thought Seizes. I, again, it's nice to have the information and the sort of catch-all removal, air quotes, that, you, that these cards provide. The meta is still early on, since Strixhaven just released not too long ago, as of the recording of this video. So, the, uh, the split of how many Inquisitions or how many Thought Seizes you might want could very well change in the future. I just figured while we're in the uh, learning and growing phase of the meta, of the Strixhaven meta, I figured a nice even split will do very nicely. I have four copies of Assassin's Trophy as a sort of catch-all removal for anything, as evidenced by the Destroy Target permanent. Giving them the land doesn't really terribly matter since our deck doesn't mind going long anyway. Also running two copies of Baleful Mastery, which can be a pretty useful sort of uh, exile creature or planeswalker that can be used very early on. Of course it doesn't it doesn't rock to give your opponent a card, but sometimes you just need to remove the thing for fairly cheap. Lands, pretty simple. Running some basics, couple castles for some card draw that the deck enjoys having, and with all the life gain that we have with the wild growths and the oozes, the life loss of the castle doesn't really matter that much and the real special lands just shock lands because they're good snarls because i think they're going to be very good in the format but it might just be me also run three temple because again we are a slower deck we don't mind taking turns off to play a scry land basically and sometimes the scrying is another way to say look for another combo piece that you might need or just for a better card in general that is the main board. Sideboard is, I would like to think, relatively self-explanatory. Two copies of Graph Digger's Cages, if you're particularly worried about some graveyardy shenanigans. Or, again, Collected Company and Muxus are the boogeyman that everyone's always scared about, so it's good to have a couple of these. Have two heroic interventions that are weirdly split. As, again, just kind of removal protection and sweeper protection against people trying to remove your board. It's pretty self-explanatory why you run Heroic Intervention. Also have two more copies of Scavenging Ooze. Besides being another a more uh, consistency to the combo you can bring in, it's nice to remove uh, particular cards from graveyards if our, your opponent isn't playing a like massive sort of graveyard synergy but just has a couple of key cards. Scavenging Ooze lets you get rid of those. I have a couple Weather the Storms, since I've been seeing a lot of, uh, like, Storm-style decks. Uh, Weather the Storm is a nice way to potentially, you know, survive a very big turn. Where there are, your opponent, say, casts a whole bunch of spells and gets an Arcolite, or a similar sort of version to this deck that runs, like, your Bolas' Citadels. Weather the Storm is nice, and it can if you needed it to just be a 2-mana gain 3 against some aggro decks, it's okay. A couple copies of Crossing Grips as a way to destroy very problem artifacts or enchantments, as well as, I suppose, in some magical Christmas land, if you ever ran against the mirror, you could destroy an exquisite blood and 
mess with the uh, abilities on the stack, basically. But again, it's more often just a removal for problem artifacts or enchantments. Two Ritual of Soots as a sort of just a nice board wipe. We It sucks to get rid of our own board, but if our opponent goes particularly wide, our life gain won't matter, so it's better to cut your losses and just sweep the board. Two copies of Raskus Contempt as sort of additional copies of Baleful Mastery that I don't own because wild cards aren't free. But also, the ability to gain two life can technically be another thing to start off the combo if you need it to. And I also run a single copy of Shifting Ceratops because goddamn mono blue tempo or mono blue spirits is really <laughs> like my big boogeyman, but it is good. And that is the basic deck tech. And now we will go into game number one. Game number one of uh, the Gain Drain deck. So we'll go ahead and play first. Ah, we have one of our combo pieces. Can't complain too much. Let's see what our opponent plays. They're mulliganing a lot, which... Or they have mulligan, sorry. So we'll see what our opponent's playing. Uh, we'll probably just play a Dina on two. Maybe we can bait out some sort of removal spells if they happen to have them. Some sort of Boros life gain? Hello, cats. And the Dina is a good blocker. So we'll take what we can get, honestly. Red, white, angels? Uh, we'll go ahead and play a temple and see what we can find. Wild growth is good. So we're gonna actually not play our branch walker, since we might very well need the life. Isn't that right? You and your sissy are playing around being goobers. A Radiant Fountain from our opponent. Very nice. We'll go ahead and play a Forest. And again, Wild Growth Walker. Oh, they're holding on to something. And the Merfolk Branch Walker. This is pretty good for showing that while the deck enjoys the infinite combo that is available to it, it is not necessary for the deck. A little bit of gain for us, and a little bit of drain for our opponent. Thus the name. We'll go ahead and not attack. Uh... There is that weird moment where I'm like, oh, Light of Hope? Okay, so we're just... Alright, that's a thing you can play. Nice! Alright, man. I am into your thing. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> That's so... I mean, it's cool. I'm not mad. Do what you gotta do and all that. Uh, I'm beginning to think the Inquisition will be a little bit of a dead card now. But we'll still go ahead and play the Veto. And we might as well see what our opponent has, if anything. Wait, what? Okay, you can counter it. I like you, the cut of your jib, my man. <laughs> well, I, I I guess that's what we're doing now. God damn it. I mean, yeah, you can... I just haven't... I don't think I've seen anybody run Tybalt's Trickery as an actual counterspell. To our opponent's credit. That, that, that fucked us up a little bit. We gain enough life that we don't mind. Ah, uh, that's something. Uh, okay, we can, we can do something with that. Do you have any creatures? You do! We'll go ahead and get rid of their Bishop of Wings. 
Uh, we'll get rid of... Since we don't have Graveyard Recursion, we don't mind getting rid of our own creatures. Uh, their board's a little bit too scary to try and fight through, so with the with Dina and our life gain outlets, we'll attempt to go over them. Go ahead and play the Inquisition. They might have just kept a land, but who knows. Angel of Destiny. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you and that player gain that much life. Hi, sweetheart, you're in front of the screen, and you're not mid-glass. I will move you. you. Gotta scoot your butt. Alright. I didn't mean for your sister to move, but thank you. Uh, at the beginning of your end step, if you at least have 15 more life than your starting total, uh, each player... Okay, it's a win con. So we'll go ahead and get rid of these uh, Righteous Valkyrie. Feeling a little more safe about attacking in here. We won't attack with Dina, since they could, in theory, block a whole bunch. Go ahead and get rid of their Valkyrie, Valkyrie, sorry. And we might as well get rid of their Escape Velocity, since we have the ability to. Uh, I'm actually not going to attack, since they can sort of just fight through most huh that's so weird okay I believe we're gonna bring in some Vraskas yeah that's that's a thing you can do yeah but you my life gain does kill you a little fat yep <laughs> someone's realizing the oopsie here we weirdly can't attack and can't do anything Uh, we'll wait till their end step, I suppose, and we can just start exiling their graveyard in the magical Christmas land, where we need to care about that, but we probably don't. Oh, that sucks! That's good, though. Good game. I'm not even mad. That is a great combo. Well done by our opponent. That is unironically amazing. Uh, we'll go ahead. Yeah, a couple of Vraska's Contempts are pretty good here. Uh, we'll get rid of probably one Branch Walker. Probably an Inquisition, since their combo pieces appear to be more high on the curve. Man, I love that. I don't even care how this, this game goes. I've shown what my deck can do, and their deck is kick-ass. They deserve some love whenever they can get it. So the writer... Love what you do, my dude. Uh, we'll go ahead and play two on one and a thought see. See what our opponents are sitting on. If they have their combo, like, enabler thing, we're going to get rid of that. But other than that, we'll just kind of play it by ear. Overgrown tomb and a thought seize. Uh, Roiling Vortex actually, like, really kills our combo, so that it actually has to die. Go ahead and play a swamp, so we have the two black for Vreska's Contempt. Play the Wild Growth Walker and see what our opponent does. Uh, I gotta get better about not revealing lands, so we'll play the Snarl, declining to reveal it, and we'll go ahead and play the Branch Walker. And another land. See what our opponent does. They don't have a red source, we're feeling pretty good. Granted, they can probably still do a lot. Oh, there's the red source. Never mind. Oh, that sucks. Um, I still think we do it just to develop a big board. Let's 
Since at this rate we might be able to just like beat the opponent down. Do we bring in Kroos and Grips? Again, at this rate, we might be able to literally just beat our opponent down, so the them turning off our life game might not be the most important. But again, which is pretty good to show that even if you can't complete the combo, it's just a good sort of... I guess you call it mid rangey just value deck. Go ahead and play the Angel of Destiny, my good man. Go ahead and Vraska's Contempt it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good game. Do we bring in the Kroos and Grips? Are there any other big ones? Eh. Eh. Yeah, probably. What do we cut, though? Maybe we cut the Masteries for the Crossing Grips. We'll see if that decision comes back to bite us, but... Eh, I'm feeling relatively good about it in the moment. Honestly, this is... Pretty damn good. You can't really ask for much more. I have a weird board sound. Got some dude in the sounds office with a snare drum. Alright. We'll go ahead and black on one and Inquisition to see what they have. Uh, I actually care more about the Valkyrie hitting than anything. The Rolling Vortex does kinda suck. But I have cards in the deck to deal with that. Our opponent could play the Vortex. Yeah, that's the thing. We'll go ahead and play a Temple. See what we can find. We don't need another land. We'll just go ahead and preemptively get rid of the Vortex. Since we have our Reach Engine, if you want to call it that, online. We're going to go ahead and not attack. Sometimes I just get another one, which really fucks my plan. Never mind. Um, thank God we drew another one. Opponents, I guess you have to turn on the anti-life gain thing, but even then, I'll take my chances. Go ahead and not attack. Next turn, we can just uh, play a branch walker and see what happens from there. So, branch walker first. See what we find. Do we want another Dina? We'll, now nah, we'll go ahead and bin that one. And we'll play a scavenging ooze. There's no point to attacking since they can just block with one of our bit one of their bishops. And no real damage gets through. Eh, we can get rid of some annoying stuff in our opponent's yard. Go ahead and get rid of the Valkyrie. Uh, 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 we'll go ahead and, there's no way they have enchantment reanimation like those lore hold cards, so I'm gonna take a, a dangerous line of play here. Go ahead and attack with the ooze. 
Also, this way, if they have, like, a settler wreckage, we don't play too much into their plan here. We'll go ahead and keep a second ooze, should they happen to get rid of the first one. Angel of Destiny. You can gain life, but you will hurt yourself. Or I can get... Or the thing, yeah. Ah, hell. Oh, that's not good. Uh... More than 50. Oh god, we need to find a removal spell. Uh, hope, luckily, Dina will help to somewhat fight through that. Kind of can't afford to do too much else here. Uh, we'll go ahead and attack with both. Trying, we're just going to try and keep their life total down. Go ahead and get rid of their Bishop of Wings. So, let me make sure. Uh, never a creature you control deals damage. So, 3 goes to 31. 31 to 34. If you play as another Angel card, I think we just die. Okay, that's good. And they'll also take a bit of damage from Dina's trigger. So it's actually going to be what? Like 31? 32? Something like that? Yeah. Which is something. Does matter. So. We're going to go ahead and play the wild growth. They do gain life, but we kind of just need to hit them. We need to do what we can to keep their life total down to prevent the Angel of Destiny's wind trigger here. There are no more creatures in graveyards of particular note that I can get rid of. I suppose we can just exile them, which... Ah, fucking hell. Uh, I think that's GG? To be fair, I couldn't block it, because I my deck lacks the ability to reach. He didn't attack for a reason. I guess we'll just get rid of our opponent's yard while we're sitting here idle as we try and figure out how the hell we win here. Uh, we needed something more than that, and that's not what we got. So... I think we might lose, but... I think we also lost last turn, they just didn't actually attack. Uh, to our opponent's credit, I don't think I've ever died to Angel of Destiny. I don't think it matters. Because once the life gain is done in first strike step, I'll just die like... Now, right? Oh, beginning of your end step, okay. So yeah, good game. No pro- oh, I gotta manually resolve all these damn things. To our opponent's credit, man. Cool deck meets cool deck. Good game, brother. That was a great game, man. On to game number two. Game number two with Game Drain. And again, we'll play first. Honestly, pretty good hand. Not a lot in it, but we can see what our opponent's doing. So we'll go ahead and Thought Seize. See what we're going up against. I'm sorry, what? Draw two cards and put a land card from hand onto battlefield. Okay, I don't know what the hell your deck is, but I am in it. This has been a good video, man. Got a couple of real spicy meatballs. We'll go ahead and play the temple. I mean, Exquisite Blood's part of the combo. Uh, I guess we get rid of the Cultivate, I think? Because they already are going to have a Lotus Cobra no matter what I do there. 
I would be very surprised if this deck runs much in the way of removal. And it might not matter. We might just get the exquisite blood kill. Which is fucking hilarious, by the way. Maybe another Lotus Cobra? Because there's no way whatever you're doing runs, like, much removal. Yeah, you save the land the next turn. Can you do something with the mana? Like an explore? You cannot. I'm gonna go ahead and just draw a card. Since I think our opponent is gonna pop the fuck off real soon. Oh no, this is so much mana. Oh no! I'm in it though. I'm fascinated. Draw two cards. Okay. You're drawing a lot of cards. Making a lot of mana. You have a lot of colors. I see no white here. So... Non-white landfall, maybe? Yeah, that's a thing you can do. I'm not going to attack because he could technically mess this up next turn if by some miracle he happens to run removal. I don't know what we run against. Do we just literally run it again? Because this appears to be some combo shit versus some combo shit, which I am in for, by the way. What is our... I don't think he's played a land. So he plays a land, he's at four mana, goes to seven. If you have removal... Oh, fucking bullshit. We still have outs. We can still make some shit happen. So there's that. You know, maybe if they do have it, maybe we run, like, some heroic interventions. Three black. A branch walker is not what I need here, game. Honorworld Breach is a good one to get rid of. Please don't give me a land. You suck. Uh, we're gonna keep the branch walker because if I draw a wild growth walker, we just have the combo and we can go. You've made a lot of mana. But have you done the ramp thing where you just kind of ramped off a cliff? I take a block all day long. We might still lose, but god damn it if we don't try. Please stop drawing the things I don't want you to draw. Okay, now we have to play both branch walkers so we don't die. I actually want to get rid of that, weirdly enough. Because I'm just playing blockers anyway. I'm going to keep it. Just for the sake of finding blockers. We're running out of explore cards to trigger this goddamn thing with. That's good! We don't attack. We don't activate the castles. Okay. We... I don't think we play the wild growth yet. Because I'd be very surprised if they don't have removal. Granted, they're drawing a lot of cards now, but I don't know what they're doing with the cards, you know? Oh, this is a sketchy one, but I think we need to see what they have. Cultivate, cultivate, ornithopter. I guess we get rid of... A cultivate. We'll play it now that we know it's safe. If they draw a removal spell off the top, we're, we were screwed anyway. There was no getting around that. Isn't that right, Baby Smokey? Oop. Yeah, come lay down, Dad. Okay. Come on, give me an explore card here. Drawing a lot of mana. Doing a lot of things. But I don't see what you're aiming for. Alright. 
So now we're just looking to see who combos off first, I suppose. What is the Ornithopter doing in there? Is it like a storm deck and you're just looking to make a fuckload of mana? Okay, so we need to... Hi, hey, baby girl. Hello. Okay, so we need to find something now, so we're going to go ahead and activate the castle. Since we don't have a way to... Yeah, that would have sucked to draw. That blow. Uh, we don't die immediately, right? We can technically do this once. Oh, for fuck's sake! Well, we almost got it. But I had to deploy my combo pieces to not fucking die. I don't know if we actually... I think we'll actually get rid of the Masteries and we'll bring in the Contempts. Since I think our opponent is just ramping to make a big dude. Because I don't really see what that deck is trying to do, you know? Like, you're playing a lot of mana... You're making a lot of lands. And to be fair, you might just win. I might just, again, not draw my combo piece. And that would suck. Or my combo and get weirdly stonewalled. Which would blow. It would suck a lot, to be fair. But I don't know if that's one of those. If our opponent wins this game, it's because they won or just I didn't do my thing. You know? As they take for fucking ever to sideboard. Come on, brother. Any second now. Okay, good. All is well. See if hopefully this time we can make some shit happen. That's better. I can do something with that. Go ahead and play Castle on turn one, since we don't have a turn one play anyway. A Thought Season suck, but, like, I have resiliency. You can take away one of the pieces, but you can't take away both of them this turn, granted. Probably take a Dina, because I can play it on two. That way it gives you the opportunity, yeah, to draw into more hand tape. Go ahead and play the Seeker Squire, see what we can find. Ah! Uh, another Thought Season kind of suck. It's not the end of the world, but it does suck. We'll go ahead and play the Snarl, revealing the Swamp, and just play a Jade Light Ranger. And we're just going to look for some things. Another Vita. Good Ledley. Of course, next turn now we can play a Temple and look a little bit deeper into the deck. See what our opponent does. I'm a little confused about what our opponent's trying to do. If they're not just a I ramp and play big things deck, which is fine, granted. There's nothing wrong with that. But maybe I'm trying to, like, read the bones here for something that just isn't there, you know? Bye, Smokey Baby. Daddy's almost done with recording, and then he can pet and cuddle all day long while videos are rendering and uploading. To be fair, that's smart, because you know I'm going to play Vito next turn no matter what happens. Don't need another land. If he has a sweeper, that's fine, because we're kind of just hitting him until he's dead. Which is a nice backup plan the deck can rely on, if nothing else. Uh, like a black source and like a ritual of soot, it suck. A growth spiral is not it. I have lethal on board. You gotta find like a... Like another heartless act, I guess, would be the thing you're looking for. Or... Insert generic black removal. A booyah! Yeah, I think we're pretty good. Again, it's one of those, I haven't seen what, if our opponent's trying to particularly do anything special. 
Again, or he could just literally be a generic I ramp and summon big dudes. That Tamiyo avatar is very pretty. I gotta be honest. Uh hmm. We got things to do, to be fair. We'll go ahead and Snarl and Inquisition on turn one. See what our opponent has. We will reveal the Force so we can play the Inquisition. Honestly, if they have like a Thought Seize, that's getting the fuck out of there. My hand is in a fragile place right now. Good. Okay, so we'll go ahead and play Adina. They have... That's a very cool growth spiral art, man. Oh, yeah, all the uh, mystical archives that weren't in standard as of release or rares and mythics. Uh... I mean, they can... Te no, they can't even play an Underworld Breach. Oh, it's the uh, crisis for one it's giving you an option for. At minimum. You could have something else I don't know about. That's what I'm assuming it is. Searches for what? Like a red land so you have access to your colors? I'm not gonna lie. I'm loving Strixhaven land art. Like, no bullshit. That might actually be a change we make to the deck. We might cut out the Bob Ross lands and put in the Strixhaven lands. Uh, I guess we just wild growth walker. No point in attacking since they can just block out the attack here. It'd suck if they remove the Dina, but like we're not gonna die. If they do, since we have Vito's in hand. They've shown to run removal, so we're not gonna overplay into the combo if we can avoid it. If nothing else is giving you Underworld Breach mana. But you don't play Underworld Breach because you have a brain, I'm assuming, in your skull. Each Choose two players. Each of them searches their library for... Okay! Unless you're gonna, like... That is a bull. I love that card. I love this play, by the way. I love our decks today for us and uh, against our opponents here. They have been some, again, some real spicy meatballs. Uh, where are you here, Dina, Fresca? Is it really at the bottom. Okay. Exquisite blood. Uh, do they have a way to make me shuffle my graveyard, or are they gonna like draw their thing? I'm very confused. I must be honest here. Go ahead and play a Seeker Squire. We're going to actively look for another land. Yeah, we need a land. We couldn't play the Vraska's Contempt anyway. Go ahead and attack since I don't think they have a response here. They could just thought seize away the exquisite blood, which would suck, but it's not the end of the world. Yeah, you tear up that laundry basket, honey. Better that than couches and stuff. Yeah, it's a dead boot. I haven't worn those boots in a while, baby girl. That's a good idea. Maybe I'll wear them to go make a snack run. Why not? Is our opponent there still? They have. What is their deck trying to do? Okay. That's cool. I need some lands here for this exquisite blood thing to do its thing. What do you have? Let's see. Skip cost is plus three of the cards from Graveyard. So you're gonna thought seize away my blood? Which, granted, while that does suck, it's fine, actually. We're in a pretty good spot to just play our, like, reach enablers and stuff. To just go over top. What in the 
fuck are you doing? I am very confused. We're gonna look for a thought seize, because I don't like what our opponent's doing here. I I am very sus. Okay. Choose two players. Does it let you what do you search first, then I search first? Is why this is taking so long? Do, 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 do. Oh good, I have to because there we go. Thought seize, good. Okay. Yeah, on the world breach. So we'll thought seize first. This way if they have some sort of force spike style thing. Song of Creation can get the fuck out of here. And yeah, we just play some dudes and beat our opponent up. Uh, we'll go ahead and graveyard that, because again, we're looking for lands. We can attack with the crew. Opponent can block a thing. But they're taking some damage here. They basically take like a minimum of, what, three damage? Or they just let all through. Okay, that's a, a thing you can do. There's literally no reason not to block the Dina at that point, because you see I'm tapped out, but that's fine. Uh, you need three other cards in the graveyard, so you could play an, a Breach. Okay, nope, that's not it. Um, we didn't draw lands, which kinda sucks, but we'll go ahead and Inquisition the... Oh, okay, it's a Storm deck. Cool! Now, no, yep, knowing this makes total sense what he's doing. Nothing but respect from our opponent. And that's our video today. Thank you all for watching. Remember to like it if you liked it, sub if you like me, and if you have some sort of questions or comments, say about, you know, deck building, substitutions if you don't have stuff, or anything, just keep it polite. That's what the comments are for. And remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together.